Oh, this is Grand Cougar, the predatory lender. Now it's been quite tough in Washington ever since the Democrats lost their majority in the Senate. So that has helped push health care stocks up for a few days, but Obama couldn't stand for that, so he decided to start beating up on the banks. And ever since that, we've seen the bank stocks do nothing but go lower ever since. And this makes great sense since Obama is the largest shareholder in bank stocks these days. What he's doing with these current actions is continuing to lose money for the bank stocks. So for this great news, we want to see what the rest of the humanoids on this world think about it. So for that, we're going to our Washington correspondence, Death and Toxins. We're here on Hollywood Boulevard with the predatory lender with Death and Toxins. Taxes. And Toxins, asking a few people about the Obama speech last night. What is the general opinion, or what do you think about the Obama speech last night? I only watched a part of it. It seemed, you know, hopeful and uh, idealistic. I wish, I wish that, you know, <laughs> all those good things could happen. I haven't seen that yet. Now, Obama had quite a speech last night. So, Spidey, now how is that affecting you? It's really not. It's not. It's, <laughs> it's Obama, you know. I, it's, he's our president. He's our, he's, our, he's our chief of staff right now. He's like, oh, he's doing a good job, I guess. I mean, I didn't really listen to the speech last night, so... I think Obama's speech, it was wonderful. He he whipped this American in, in shape. He reminded people that he wasn't responsible for this mess. But for a man with two wars to single-handedly handle that economy, he's been knocking it down. I don't care what you say, Barack is on the one. And you? Uh, well, you know, it, it's a very difficult job having a job as the president, let me tell you. Uh, and uh, the guy at the top, you know, I've been that guy at the top for a long time. And he really do try to uh, do as many things as he can. I mean, you know what? He's a, uh, you know, he's only been in office for one year, and you know, for uh, he's, uh, you know, he did pretty good for one year. He sure did a lot of stuff. But hopefully, he can get more done this year. You know, he does have a lot of opposition from those Republicans. You know. <laughs> now, Indiana, I know you do a lot of stuff with foreign companies and stuff. How do you feel about Obama's hard stance on foreign companies? You know, not doing business in this country. Isn't that a good thing? It is a good thing. It's not something that we can discourage, but it's, uh, I, th I think more it, probably the way he should have described it as an encouragement of American companies is probably the better way to do it. We're a competitive place. This is a place where it's built on whatever, whoever does the best. But I think uh, he should encourage our people to do the best. You know, the government's the largest holder of bank stocks. Isn't that good that he's beating down bank stocks and losing so much money for taxpayers? I mean, we as death and taxes surely encourage higher taxes and lower bank stocks for a better economy. Isn't that great? No, it's uh, it's not the way I look at it. The, I mean, anything that's an uh, American stock, we want to be higher right now, if, as long as they're not doing anything bad to the public. So uh, I think... Beating on the banks is just him trying to win political points uh, and hurt our economy at the same time. I think he's just getting started, and he's right. This is just the first year, and it's time for us to move forward and put some regulatory action against some of these banks. We need to stop these bonuses and then move on from there. The banks are the whole reason it's all completely upside down. They, they, were, they, they loaned us air. Okay. And then want us to give them money back. Okay, so it's a debt society. So of course we encourage higher debt and higher taxes. Right, that's exactly what's happened with it. Which it's just all backwards. <laughs> we have our gold back, please. <laughs> gold and silver back, please. He saved the banks, man. But He's bank stocks are down for listen, five days he, in a row. That's okay. It'll come back up. It'll come back up. It'll come back up. Did what he did. It'd have been a lot worse Stop had it. he hadn't had to bail yeah. out. We would have all been broke. What's your name? We'd have been yeah. killing each other. Come on, come on here. Uh -huh. So, isn't it good that um, Obama's beating up on the banks, Elvis? Uh, well, the thing is, I think he's got a point as far as, you know, we don't want that fiasco to happen again. And so we do have to go ahead and keep a chain on them somehow so they don't get so big that it's going to do that again. And he's talking about making sure to control them so they only get certain size, you know what I mean? And that's absolutely true because if we just let it happen again, you know, is that is that right? Now, how do you think about all this money he's losing for the taxpayers by beating up on bank stocks? Well, just think about all the money we lost when the banks were taken and put in our own pocket. It's maddening unhelpful. It's a bunch of parts, you ask me. Oh, yeah, that's, that's encouraging. 
Now, how encouraging is it that he's beating up on these bank stocks now that he's the largest shareholder? It's not, it's not encouraging in any way. As a matter of fact, he's not even learning from his mistakes. It's time to get to the middle and start getting on board with what's going on here in the world, okay? People need jobs. Don't be a senator for an hour, then become the president, because you don't know what you're doing. It's death, I'm for war, because war kills people, and that's why death has a job. What do you think? Oh, yeah. Well, you know, the Iraqi war, I always thought was just kind of a mistake from the get-go, but I know everybody was gung-ho for Afghanistan, because we wanted to get big mod in. But, you know, Afghanistan, I mean, but for the Iraqi war, good grief, the whole thing's going to be over in August, I hope. Woo! <laughs> Now, you've had a lot of experience in, in war and, and fighting the bad guys. What do you think of his war policies? Again, it just seems really idealistic. Um, you think we can get the people out of Iraq? I wish that we could. It, it seems like we're repeating history from Vietnam. Stan, what do you think of his war project? You're a war man. I think it's like this, mate. If we would take care of our own country first and take care of our people, we would be a stronger nation together to stand up. We would be healthier. We would be stronger. We would be more wiser. Our kids would have health care and be in good schools. We won't have this falling out we're having here because we're spending all our money elsewhere. I think it's just politics suck, man. What do you think of his war policy? He seems to be pulling everyone back and pulling everyone should. And... Well, yeah, you see, he's... His program is no really different than George Bush. He just wants to leave uh, Iraq and do the same thing in Afghanistan. I don't see, uh, oh, Guantanamo Bay, still open. Oh, and let's try all these people in New York City. Now, that's, that's the perfect thing to do. It costs us even more money. Yeah. Uh, he's, he's, a, he's a genius, the president. Right. We don't need to, find, we don't need to have a war. Oh, God, I want to, some war, man. Let's have some war. We need to find... <laughs> Uh, uh, bin Laden and be done with it. Okay. Man, when, you know, when I was in the military, I drove war. a tank, but I could put a, a, a tank up Bin Laden's ass. Let me tell you right now. We can have boom, a, boom, you know, boom, boom. We can have a war against Al Qaeda, but not a war against the country. What do you think of his war policy? I think you got to make sure you win a war before you get out. And uh, I'm not sure pulling people out anywhere is right now the way to do it. But I, I. I think whatever you got to do to make sure this stuff is going. The thing I liked right now is Afghanistan, I heard recently, set up a thing where they started talking with the, with the Taliban, and I think that's an encouraging step. I think it's time to sit down with the Taliban and see what needs to be done to create a peaceful situation there. And, uh, but putting troops in there to back it up seems like a good policy as well. Right now, the only ones that can afford health care is the rich, and the rich are getting richer. Why more people are getting poor because more people are taking more they can. Seems funny now, though, but the end, supposedly the world coming to an end and things with 2012. Everybody's scared, everybody's hungry, but yet no one wants to spend nothing, and the ones that are spending it's because they got it to spend. And the ones that ain't got nothing to spend are holding on what they got because they ain't got much anywhere to spend. Make any sense? Well, the thing is that, you know, there's a lot of people that don't want that health care thing, you know. Uh, I think he doesn't want to really do it the way that they really overhaul. I think he just wants to make the health, just the insurance a little affordable so that everybody can get it. So the system can kind of remain kind of intact, but everybody else can contribute. And then the, all the premiums will go lower. I, I really hope we can work that out. It's really sad that in America there's so many of us that can't afford health care and that, you know, people misuse that system. You know, I know people that get facials every week on their health care when there's other people that, you know, broke their arm and needed fixed. Simple stuff. Basics. They're probably going to be against it. I mean, you know, they're not going to shell out money for medical care. You know, it's, it costs to help people. They don't want to help us because they're the rich. Well, we... The, well, don't we want people to be rich? No. Everyone is rich, but we need to be rich, not them. Well, yeah. I mean, don't we want the aliens and people from other planets and countries to be rich and Americans to be poor? The aliens can be rich, but not the Republicans. Not the Republicans. Not the Republicans. Not the Republicans. Because they're really the aliens. Okay. Or Democrat. Okay. Because the aliens. Okay. Maybe it's the other way around. They're in disguise. Uh -huh. well, okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. <laughs> I think the, the health care situation is basically dead. Uh, you, you could tell us. Hey, hey, you should like that. That's good. That's good. Yeah, you're all about that. <laughs> You can tell his frustration in his last in his speech a few days ago, and he's kind of switched switch gears now. Now he's talking more about the banks. He's trying to win some political uh, points back. It, it looks like 
it's basically uh, it's on the back burner at least. Okay. Bill Clinton was going to send me a health care card when I was 18. I still haven't gotten it yet. I'm still waiting. <laughs> I'm waiting. Hey, anything's possible. At least they actually had the little card back there. Remember him and his wife? These people have uh, free health. There's no such thing as anything free in America. You know that. So you like, so you like higher taxes, right? So we can increase the burden on society for the average person? No, absolutely not. I mean, higher taxes is something that we encourage at the Predatory Lending Network. Well, don't do that anymore. Why not? We're, we're the bad guys. Yes, you are. We're going to stop doing that right now. <laughs> so again, this is Death and Taxes from the Predatory Lender talking to you about Obama. Thank you.